Hello everybody, my name is Roy Nemmer of MundalBislase.com and welcome to another video and this time around it's all about the Argentine midfielders, their season in Europe, what they won, what they didn't win, the goal scored, the preview for the, for the finalissima against Italy, who could play, who has a chance of making the bench, making the team, we're going to get to it. If you missed it, we did release our Argentine strikers video, the review. It's up on the YouTube channel. Check it out if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notifications button to never miss a thing. So let's get to it. Let's get to the midfielders and let's get things off with a Copa del Rey winner, winner with Real Betis, Guido Rodriguez. A good season, a solid season for him. He had 47 matches, two goals and three assists in total. In La Liga, 32 matches, one goal, two assists. In the Europa League, nine matches, one goal, one assist. And the Copa del Rey, six matches, no goals and no assists. But he did win the Copa del Rey, as I mentioned. And for a defensive midfielder, those are some pretty good numbers. Now, Rodriguez has a very good chance of starting for Argentina against Italy, especially with no Leandro Paredes. We mentioned this before in the previous video. We mentioned this on the website. Paredes is out with a groin injury. He did undergo surgery back in April, so he was not selected for the match against Italy. Now, this really opens the door for Guido Rodriguez, and out of all the midfielders we're going to talk about today, he is the one that has the biggest chance of replacing Paredes in midfield for a lot of reasons. The first reason being... He has naturally been Paredes' substitute for the Argentina national team, at the very least, since the last Copa America. At the last Copa America, Guido started three matches and, oddly enough, did not start the first match against Chile, was not even part of the squad against Chile in the opening match at the Copa America. The second match, he was there against Uruguay. So Lina Scaloni obviously saw something and continues to see something. Uh, in Rodriguez, and uh, I'm not complaining, by the way. I'm not saying that in a bad way at all. But clearly, he must have impressed at one point to go from not even being on the team selected for the match day against Chile to starting against Uruguay and scoring against Uruguay. Because if you remember, Guido scored the only goal in that match uh, for Argentina, which proved to be the match winner in the 1-0 win versus Uruguay. So Guido definitely, definitely has a chance uh, to start um, in place of the injured Paredes against Italy. And it wouldn't be the first time, obviously, as mentioned. And he has been the substitute at the Copa America final. Paredes started in place of Guido, but Guido came on as a substitute uh, for the last 30, 30 some minutes. So Scaloni trusts him. And, um, you know, more often than not, Guido has delivered. He has brought that defensive stability uh, for the team. And I, for one, uh, would think he'd be a solid, solid uh, addition to the starting eleven if he were to start. Now, that's the news on Guido. So, a natural defensive midfielder, uh, more of a natural defensive midfielder, more than uh, more than Paredes, actually. Uh, so, a good, good chance for him to start. And uh, let's continue. So, we're going from a Copa del Rey win winner to someone in the Premier League. Alexis McAllister, and this is a very, very interesting uh, case when it comes to the Argentina national team. Alexis McAllister, well, first off, let's look at his stats with Brighton uh, in total in the Premier League in England. And his numbers are 36 matches in total, 5 goals, 4 assists. In the Premier League, 33 matches, 5 goals, 2 assists. In the FA Cup, uh, 1 match, no goals, no assists. And in the EFL Cup, 2 matches. Uh, zero goals, and zero assists. Now, the thing with uh, McAllister that makes it very interesting is that he is a midfielder, he's an attacking midfielder, still only 23 years old, part of the Argentina Olympic team last summer, uh, the team that unfortunately did not go very far in the Olympics. They were eliminated in the group stages. Now, the curious part or the interesting part about McAllister is his absence from the national team. He played two matches uh, back in 2019 for the Argentina national team and was not selected since this year. So a solid uh, two, two and a half years uh, away from the Argentina national team. Now, he was part of the under-23 uh, under teams, of the under-20 teams, 
but the senior team, he was away for a couple of years. And the interesting part is that the match against Venezuela, so Argentina played against Venezuela and against Ecuador in the last two World Cup qualifiers, uh, one being at the end, end of February and the other being at the very beginning of March. And he started both games. Now, the match against Venezuela, uh, a couple of injuries there, but he did start. So Alexis McAllister, for example, started ahead of uh, Gio Lo Celso in the match against Venezuela and the match against Ecuador as well. So the match against Venezuela, match against Ecuador, we had a midfield trio of Rodrigo De Paul, Leandro Paredes, and Alexis McAllister. So Scaloni absolutely trusted him in those two matches. And the thing with, with McAllister is he seems to have gained some ground in the national team because he went from not being selected to not only being selected, but being in the squad and being in the starting 11. So to a certain degree, he's up there against one of the other players that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. But he started ahead of Lo Celso, and Lo Celso, for the longest time, uh, was someone that Scaloni trusts and continues to trust. But McAllister started ahead of Lo Celso, and we're going to get to that in, in a little bit as to why uh, you know, Lo Celso ultimately lost his starting spot in the team for, for a while or what looked like he lost it. But in terms of McAllister, he impressed to the point where he's he's back in the squad. He remains in the squad. Now, does he have a chance of starting against Italy in the Finalissima match? He absolutely does. For my money, if I were a betting man between the two, between Guido and uh, McAllister, I think Guido gets the start alongside uh, Rodrigo De Paul and Gio Lo Celso, who I think... Uh, we'll start in midfield uh, alongside Rodrigo De Paul. So very interesting. Keep an eye out on Alexis McAllister. Not individually, not the greatest season uh, in England for him with Brighton, but he's obviously shown something in training, and he's a very, very talented player and still very young at the age of 23, uh, and he's in the team. So uh, watch out for him. If he's not a starter against Italy, it does not mean that he cannot be a substitute brought on. He has that creativity. And that he can definitely, definitely add something in midfield. Now, moving on from Alexis McAllister to someone who I just, just mentioned, Rodrigo De Paul, 48 matches uh, for Atletico Madrid in total, four goals, two assists in La Liga, 36 matches, three goals, two assists in the Champions League, nine matches, one goal, zero assists. The Copa del Rey, two matches, zero goals, zero assists. And in the Supercopa, one match, zero goals, and zero assists. Now, this is someone for wh whom I absolutely love, and I think every Argentina fan just adores. Gives it his all, the engine, the, the heartbeat of that midfield for Argentina. Uh, one of the, if not the best player on the pitch uh, in the Copa America final against Brazil. Not only did he give the assists, he was just everywhere, everywhere at the Maracanã for Argentina. Now, what made me, what, what, something that angers me on the inside and it's not about De Paul it's more about his season with Atletico Madrid is you know when he gets the chance especially in the big games he performs and performs pretty well and I was very excited when he signed with Atletico I thought Simeone is just going to get the best out of him I thought Simeone would be the ideal coach for De Paul it hasn't looked that way it has not looked that way and while he's played a decent amount of matches he hasn't started or he hasn't gotten the confidence, he hasn't, Simeone hasn't shown that confidence to him. He starts one match, benched the other, starts one match, benched the other. And for example, against Real Madrid, a big, big match, he was on the pitch for not even five minutes. I think he was actually on the pitch for one minute, just came on in, in the last, you know, pretty much the kick of the match. And someone like De Paul, you, know, you, you got to play him. You got to play him. You see what he can do with Argentina. You saw what he, what he did at Udinese in Italy. With Racing, he was a good player as well a couple of years ago. So you know what he brings to the table. And, you know, I was expecting more, not from him, but more from Simeone in terms of starting him and trusting him. Now, fortunately for Argentina, that has not affected his form when putting on uh, this, this guy blue and white shirt. So Rodrigo De Paul, I don't think it's going to be any surprise to see him uh, in the starting 11. I think it would be a surprise if he was not in the starting 11 for Argentina against Italy. And, you know, the, the one thing that, in my opinion, Scaloni might have to watch out for, and this is something that we saw to a certain degree against Ecuador, is the fact that in that match, in that 1-1 draw against Ecuador, 
the Ecuadorians were all over the ball. Whenever the ball would get close to the ball or have the ball, they were swarming him. And they're going to need that creativity. So if it's Guido Rodriguez, I mean, Guido Rodriguez is more of a defensive midfielder. So if it's Lo Celso that starts alongside the ball, and I think it will be Lo Celso, he's going to have a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. The creativity is going to have to go through Lo Celso in case, in case Italy decide to just completely try and mark the ball out of the game. Otherwise, I think the ball is probably going to have a field day, uh, to be honest. He steps it up in the big matches for Argentina, continues to do so. He does shot. He does not shy away from pressure. And he, he's the guy. He's the guy for Argentina in midfield. As much as I love De Paul, as much, sorry, as much as I love Paredes and as much as I love Lucelso, you got to love De Paul. Everything he brings to the table. And that's not a knock on, on Paredes or Lucelso by any stretch of the imagination. It's just something about De Paul. You have to like that desire, that hunger. And not saying the other players don't have it or don't bring it. Because every single player in this Argentina team does. But something about De Paul. Something about him. So that's De Paul's season. Not individually, not the greatest uh, debut season uh, with Atletico Madrid. But like I said, that's not on him. And maybe not even on, on Simeone. If they're, maybe, some, maybe Simeone sees something in training. We don't. But whatever it is. I'm not seeing it. Scaloni's not seeing it. And uh, De Paul just continues to do so, so well for uh, for Argentina. Now, moving on from Rodrigo De Paul all the way to Germany. Oh, yeah. We, we saw someone. We saw two players in Spain. We saw one in England. Now it's time to get to Germany. And it's none other than Ezekiel Palacios. And you want to talk about someone who lost ground in the Argentina national team. And I'm going to mention why, or potentially why, in just a second. But let's take a look at his season with Bayer Leverkusen, uh, the midfielder, 32 matches, three goals, two assists. Uh, in the Bundesliga, 23 matches, two goals, two assists. In the Europa League, seven matches, one goal, zero assists. In the German Cup, uh, two matches, zero goals, and zero assists. Now, uh, Palacios is one of those players where, you know, he was to a certain degree constantly selected by Scaloni, especially when Scaloni first took over the national team. But injuries really, really hampered uh, Palacios' uh, Palacios progression with the national team and with his club career as well. Uh, with Bayer Leverkusen, missed several, several matches uh, due to injury. And, you know, if, if you watch Palacios, for example, back in 2020 in the World Cup qualifiers, he was being selected in La Paz, uh, at altitude versus Bolivia, he was probably the best player on the pitch. Ezekiel Palacios was absolutely incredible for Argentina in that match. A match which, by the way, they won. And they had not won there uh, in several matches, especially uh, you know when you think of Argentina-Bolivia. Unfortunately, you think of that infamous match uh, in, in La Paz uh, with uh, Diego Maradona as coach. Humiliating loss. Uh, so bad, I don't even want to say the scoreline. You could Google it, you could YouTube it. Uh, but, um, you know, going back to Palacios, he was the best player on the pitch uh, versus Bolivia. But injuries, injuries really slowed him down. And while he was part of the national team that won the Copa America, uh, he did not play too many matches in the World Cup qualifiers after that, wasn't always selected. And when he was selected, he didn't always play. And if he did play, it was a couple of minutes here and a couple of minutes there. So this is someone that, has to really, really, you know, push it in training, in my opinion, or, or show that he does belong there. I'm not saying he doesn't belong there, but he's someone that has lost ground with the national team. Alexis McAllister has come in and to a certain degree has taken over his spot with the national team. And he has competition. Palacios has competition from the likes of Alexis McAllister, from the likes of Gio Lo Celso, from the likes of Paredes, uh, Guido Rodriguez as well, even though Guido's more of a defensive midfielder. You could throw in a forward like Papu Gomez in there as well in midfield. He has competition from him. So while still a young kid and, and you know, no doubt he will have a good and solid future with the national team, his present form right now with Argentina, if you look at it, his spot in the World Cup, far from certain, far from certain. I'm not saying he won't make it. He probably will uh, because, you know, Scaloni for the, you know, if, if you go through Scaloni's call-ups uh, throughout the years since he took over as coach, Palacios, when healthy, has been there. But recently, recently, he hasn't always started, mostly down due to injuries and now competition as well. 
Now, I'm not saying he won't start versus Italy. I don't think he would be. I think it would be a, a surprise if he were to start against Italy. Uh, I mentioned Rodrigo de Paul. I mentioned Guido Rodriguez. I think those are going to be two of the three midfielders. I don't necessarily think McAllister will be the third, and I don't think Ezekiel Palacios will be the third. One guy who I think will be the third is a player who, I mean, his first half of the season, if you compare the first half to the second half of the season, night and day, and it, it can only be one guy, Gio Lo Celso, what a season, what a turnaround for him from Tottenham to Villarreal, from the Europa Conference League to the semifinals of the Champions League. And if we take a look at his numbers, incredible amount of matches, by the way, uh, 41 matches in total, uh, two goals, three assists. And in La Liga with Villarreal, 16 matches, one goal, one assist. In the Champions League, six matches, uh, zero goals, zero assists. And this is where it gets interesting because in La Liga, he had 16 matches. In the Premier League with Tottenham, he had nine matches. And nine matches, zero goals, zero assists in the Premier League. Uh, in the Conference League, three matches, one goal, one assist. In the Conference League qualifiers, two matches, zero goals, zero assists. The FA Cup, one match, zero goals, one assist. And the EFL Cup, four matches, zero goals, zero assists. And this is someone that I just mentioned his season turned around. One of the best players in Spain. Uh, I mean, if you just look at his numbers there, nothing crazy, right? Doesn't score an obscene amount of goals. Doesn't provide an obscene amount of assists. But his build-up play, those pre-assists, if you want to use that term. Wow. Wow. I mean, he's someone that you have to watch to truly enjoy. If you watch Lo Celso, forget about the goals, forget about the assists. It's what he does with the ball, that killer pass that will create that, that assist for, uh, for his fellow teammate. And with Argentina, I mentioned this. I thought he lost ground to Alexis McAllister to a certain degree, right? But his turnaround with Villarreal, wow, absolutely incredible. And I think he will be that third midfielder. I think Scaloni is going to go back to that Copa America midfield of Rodrigo de Paul, Gio Lo Celso, and in this case, not Leandro Paredes because of injury, but Guido Rodriguez. And, you know, I, ironically enough, I think maybe Lo Celso getting benched uh, in the last couple of matches for Argentina or not starting uh, the last couple of matches for Argentina. I think that maybe put that maybe lit a fire under him um, because to a certain degree he was, I mean, he wasn't a starting 11. There's no doubt about it. And then his form dip with Tottenham and Scaloni was not afraid of not starting him, which I absolutely love from Scaloni. But he's in fantastic form. No chance. So if you just look at club-wise, I'm not talking about what they do with the national team, but club-wise, out of all the midfielders that we just spoke about, Lo Celso probably has or probably is in the best form out of all of them, even better than Rodrigo de Paul. Now, I'm just talking about club form. So I think uh, we get a midfield three of Rodrigo de Paul, Gio Lo Celso, and Guido Rodriguez just behind them. And I think Lo Celso is going to have to play a pivotal, pivotal role in that midfield to carry that ball over to the attack, get it to Messi, uh, get it to Di Maria if it's him that starts, play that killer pass to Lotaro Martinez. If you watch, for example, Lotaro Martinez's goal, I mentioned pre-assist, but if you watch his goal against Colombia at the Copa America, there was a pass by Gio Lo Celso that just split Colombia wide open in the semifinals. He got it to Messi. Messi dribbled around uh, Yerimina, held the ball, played it to uh, Lotaro, and Lotaro scored. But that goal does not happen if Gio Lo Celso does not split through with, uh, with a killer pass and just slice open Colombia. And we're going to have to see more of that from Lo Celso. He's capable of doing it. He's a very intelligent player. Not the fastest player with the ball at his feet, but right here, where it matters, extremely quick. M faster and more intelligent than most midfielders. And, and that's something that, in my opinion, is very underrated in his game. People love to look at midfielders these days and just judge them by the amount of goals or the amount of assists. You're missing out. And Lo Celso is one of those players where you are missing out if that's all you judge him by. Now, those are my three midfielders. That's who I think will start for Argentina against Italy. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think that's going to be the, 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 the three in the middle of, of the pitch? Would you go with three others? What, what would your midfield be? Let me know. Leave a comment. I am loving, by the way, absolutely love the interactions. 
uh, in the videos in the comments section. Uh, if you missed it, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the video in regards to the forwards of the strikers, it's on YouTube. I'm going to put the link down in the description just in case, but it's there. Uh, you'll be able to click it and watch it if you haven't already. And if you have, you just want to go back and looking at it and look at it, you can definitely do it. You can definitely do it. So let me know uh, what you think of, uh, of that midfielder. We're going to have another video in regards to the defenders and the goalkeepers. That's coming up in a, in a little bit. So let me know uh, what you think of the midfielders. If you like what you saw, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to never miss a thing. And hit that notifications button to be the first person notified as soon as a new video drops. Thank you for watching, everybody. Once more, my name is Roy Nemmer of MundoAbisasi.com, and thank you for watching.